Mr Corsi here. Now, Middleman's a wonderful game for capitalists who love making a profit. The players buy and sell DVDs or audio discs or whatever, and the player with the most cash at the end of the game is the winner. So there's a bunch of players, and there's a middleman. Think of him as a market, if you like. Here's a quick resume of the game. It's structured as follows. The players enter a buying round where they make offers for discs held by the middleman. Now, he deals with these offers in order, so he goes to the best or the highest offer first, and he'll have a limited number of discs, so not all offers will be met. So he works through these offers, satisfying them from the highest down until his discs have disappeared. And he does that in a fair manner. So players buy their discs, settle up with the middleman for cash, and they now enter a selling round. And this time, players price the discs they have, some are all of their stock, they don't need to sell them all, and the middleman then buys what he needs, obviously buying up the cheapest first. And the middleman may not want all the discs, so the players may be left with unsold discs. So they sell the discs and they settle up with the middleman. And that's the end of the first cycle of the game and there are 10 buying and selling cycles in a complete game. Now, all the details of these transactions will be kept by each player in their own game sheet. Now, I've put a link to a PDF copy underneath the video. So let's now drill down into the details. So, what do you need? You'll need a game sheet for each player. Each player should have a pencil and spare paper for calculations. The game works with any number of players, two upwards. Um, I'll be illustrating the game with four players. So here's the setup. Uh, players agree who will make the middleman calculations. And first of all, players fill up the row A and the row D. Now you can see on these sheets, row A, row D, numbers 0 up to 9 in any old order. Make sure row D is different from row A. So that's an initial task. And each player starts with 10 times the number of players cash. So in my case, in this game, it's 40. Two players would be 20, etc. And players start with no discs in their stock. So all players put their cash held. In my case, it's 40 and discs held zero. And we can now enter the buying round. So, how does the play now proceed? Now remember, a complete game consists of 10 buying and selling cycles, and these 10 cycles correspond to the columns 1 to 10 on the game sheet. And players together work down these columns in order. First, there's the summary, cash held, discs held. Then there's the buying details, that's the buying round. And then there's another summary of what cash and discs you now hold. And then finally in that cycle there's the selling details that get filled in. And then another summary at the top of column two, what do you now hold in cash and what discs do you now hold? And remember, winning after completing the 10 columns, it's the player with the most cash that wins. So, let's now examine the mechanics of a buying round. Now, players will have secretly written down their discs wanted and offers per disc, and these are now revealed. And the middleman is now able, with this information, to calculate the outcome of these offers, and he uses the A number to start himself off. So here's what he does. So let's now determine how many discs Middleman has available for the players to buy. And that comes from the A numbers. And we have 8 in Red's case. Green player has 5 for the A number. Blue player has 6. And purple player has 4. Total, 
23. So there are 23 discs available to the players to buy from the middleman. And middleman will satisfy the highest offer first. And that's the purple player who's offered five per disc and wants eight discs. There's certainly eight discs available. So purple gets eight. How many are left? 15. Next highest offer is red. Red's prepared to pay four for each one and wants ten. And there's certainly ten less left. So the red player gets all ten and there's five now left. Now the last two players, green and blue, have both offered three. Uh, they want ten and thirteen but there's only five left. So the most equitable way of doing that is to give each of them two. So green gets two and blue gets two. And that means there's one left over. Now, had there been a fifth player that wasn't in the looking because they'd only offered two per disc, say, that fifth player would have got that spare disc by default, if you like. So that's the end of the buying round and players now do all their summaries, see how much money they've now got and how many discs they've got. So let's now look at the details and how to fill in the next few boxes as we work through this game. So let's start off with the red player and red player has spent 40 having bought 10 discs at four per disc for tens 40. And green player has spent six having bought two discs at three per disc. Three twos are six. Blue player has spent six having bought two discs at three each. Two threes are six. And 40 spent by purple player having bought eight discs at five each. Five eights are 40. So back to red player. Now red player now has no money left, having spent 40 of the 40 that uh, red player initially had. Green player now has 34, having spent 6 of the 40 that green player originally had. And blue player now has 34, having spent 6 of the 40 Purple player, well, purple player has no cash, having spent 40 of the 40. And finally, discs held. Let's look at red, red player. Red player now has 10 discs, having bought 10 and has started off with none. Green player, they now have two discs, having bought two and starting out with no discs. Blue player now has two discs having bought two and starting out with none. And finally purple player has eight discs having bought eight and starting out with none. So having completed these summaries players are now going to enter the selling round. And the rules for this are very similar to the buying round. Uh, all players decide on the number of discs they're going to sell and the price they're going to put that on. Now, at. now remember that prices are always from 1 to 10. No more than 10 and always integers. So once that's decided, here's the completed sheets. You'll note that all players have summarise the cash they now hold and the discs that they hold and they've filled in the discs that they're hoping to sell and the price they're offering these discs at. And to establish how much middleman wants the D numbers are now important. So let's now dig down into the details of how this selling round pans out. So let's now look at the demand for discs that the middleman has. And these come from the D numbers for players. Red D number is 0. Green D number is 4. 
blue D number is 5 and purple D number is 7. So that's a total of 16 discs that the middleman is demanding from the players. And of course middleman buys from the cheapest first and that's the blue player. The blue player is offering discs at 8 per disc. So two are for sale. Blue player, there's 16 wanted, so that's okay. Blue will sell two. There will then be 14 discs still on demand by the middleman. Next cheapest is purple. Purple selling discs at nine. Eight for sale. They'll all be sold. And middleman is still asking for six more discs. Uh, at this point, uh, red and green are both selling for ten. So the only fair way to distribute these six is to say, well, green gets two sold, as would red, which means four discs. There's another two discs altogether, which can only be sold to red. So red will get four discs sold, green will get two discs sold. So that's the six, the six discs sold and there's no more discs being demanded. Middleman has completed. So the only person that loses out on the sales is red with six discs still left. They were all too expensive in effect for the market. So after that first complete cycle of buying and selling, let's have a closer look at the four game sheets to see how the players completed them. So let's look at the red sheet first. The income box, this comes from the disc sold for and the price per disc 10. For 10's 40. Green player, income 20, that comes from selling two discs at 10 per disc. Blue player, 16 income, that comes from selling two discs at 8 each. And purple player, 72, that comes from selling eight discs at 9 each. Now if we go back to the red sheet, the cash held... That will come from the income, 40, added to the previous cash held. And on the green sheet, cash held, 54, that comes from the income, 20, added to the previous cash held, 34. And the blue player, cash held now, 50, that comes from an income of 16, added to the previous cash held of 34. And finally, the purple player now has a uh, cash held of 72, which comes from an income of 72, and that player had no cash held previously. Finally, the discs held. Red player now holds six discs, because they sold four out of their stock of ten. And green player has no discs, because they sold the two discs that they held. Blue player now has no discs because blue player sold the two discs that they held. And finally the purple player has no discs because they sold all eight discs that they previously held. So at this stage it would appear that purple player is doing the best with 72 cash held, followed by green at 54, blue at 50 and bottom of the pile is red player at 40. However, at this stage of the game, there are selling rounds ahead of us, and so six discs that the red player holds could be worth anything up to 60. And so potentially that red player is now worth 100, which would put red player in the lead. Now remember, after at the end of the game, after 10 cycles, it is only cash that counts. Any remaining discs at the end are not worth anything. 
So that's basically the way middleman is played. So this is Mr. Corsi signing out and I hope you enjoyed the video.